Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be watching the Sodaz Warhammer 40k Siege video because the Astartes 2 trailer is not out yet, and this gentleman has made a phenomenal animation. The graphics are not as good as Astartes, but the animation is pretty effing solid. And that's the way that I would uh, conceptualize this, is basically the... Um, so... Death of Hope... Nails aesthetics, but doesn't have that great of animation. Sodaz has phenomenal animation and not the best aesthetics or graphics. Astartes has everything and it's a masterpiece. And the reason why we're not watching the Astartes 2 trailer today is because it hasn't been publicly released. It's actually just been ripped. And I am a piece of shit who posted a ripped video but took it down after being chastised by the Astartes community because I am a terrible person. And I probably would be leaving it up if nobody was giving me shit for it. But I will do the right thing for the wrong reasons, so I earn your subscription. So I hope you subscribe to this channel. So without further ado, let's get into this video by Sodaz, S-O-D-A-Z, which is a phenomenal animation. Tolerate the graphics, because frankly, this is a kick-ass fucking video, and I'm very happy to share, with, uh, share it with you today. All right, so as with all my reviews, go watch the original, come back to me. It's only four minutes and 18 seconds. Again, you can find it at Sodaz, S-O-D-A-Z. Just to break down the 40K universe, for those of you who are uninitiated, this is an Imperial Fist. I believe they're the seventh legion. I'm gonna have to Google that, so I'm not a uh, you know an idiot, basically repeating bullshit for no reason. But Imperial Fist's legion. Yep, seventh legion, so I'm not an idiot. Good to go. So they're the Praetorians of Terra. They are responsible for the, de uh, the defense of Earth. They are the uh, defense masters of the Imperium and the Loyalist sides. Covered by my beautiful pa uh, face over here is a Mechanicus Priest of Mars. They are obtaining knowledge from this sacred document. And there was a gentle nod, which like to give, uh, a, you know, so does his credit, could have nothing to do with the Stardes, but is still a badass if unintentional homage to Astartes where uh, the the space marines are silent stoic protectors of humanity which is going to become beautiful and phenomenal uh, later on in this video so also just to conceptualize it this is a transhuman uh, the adeptus mechanicus are transhumans go watch my other lore video and this is a space marine who is an eight feet eight foot tall technologically and genetically enhanced super warrior and uh, we'll get into some more stuff later on. The mildest of criticisms. Shots in this video and Sodaz videos, which I love by the way, so I'm not dogging on them, but I'm pointing out a small thing. So if he ever sees this, then he'll get a little bit of positive feedback. Some of the, the fire effects, like the bolter rounds and the shots, they go wild for like, um, f not for logical reasons, but for aesthetic reasons, like uh, cinematic reasons. And you know, so uh, a character will walk in and they'll blast an array of bullets in like a, in, in a direction in which there are no enemies. A missile will streak for no reason. A uh, you know the the bolt the the bolt rounds will uh, cave in a different direction. Plasma shots will go in different directions. But what Astarte does does better, even though I love Sodas, is that everything serves a purpose. Every single thing is hyper realistic. Every single round, every single shot, every single action by somebody on the screen is purposeful and it's targeted. And that's what's so cool about it is that you can see every single person on screen putting 100% of their mental effort into trying to kill the enemy and it either succeeding or failing. So while I am absolutely in love with some of the animation and aesthetics that are captured here, so for instance, the Citadels being the Gothic style architecture of the Warhammer 40k universe, this being a Chaos Space Marines, specifically Iron Warriors Land Raider that has been customized with beautiful 
beautiful dragon heads on its twin LAS cannons. I am absolutely in love with so much of what Sodas has done, but it's that little attention to detail that will take you from a like a great artist to a phenomenal one. And I'm not an artist, by the way. I'm a critic, uh, so that makes me an asshole for pointing these things out. But what I'm pointing out is probably still true. Okay, so just a little lore on the Iron Iron Warriors. The Imperial Fists and the Iron Warriors are two heads of a coin. The Imperial Fists are the Defense Masters, and the Iron Warriors are the Siege Masters. So they are great. Uh, both of them are great at building emplacements, one for offense and one for defense. And that's kind of what you're seeing here um, aesthetically through the play between the two chapters is that the um, you, you have two pitted enemies who are designed uh you know aesthetically and lore wise to be bitter enemies and they are in the lore and that stretches all the way back to the horus heresy and what's cool about the iron warriors as much as i don't like the yellow and black it doesn't feel very practical um for uh, their pauldrons and also um Perturabo is apparently like a very emo person who is just rage filled and screws over his uh subordinates all the time what i do love about the iron warriors is they're very uh, hellenistic in their lore so their their planet was a city of uh nation states and that's why Perturabo became a siege master even before he joined his legion was because he basically had to siege all of the city-states of his home planet in order to become a siege master uh, even before he had access to his legions. Okay. So, we had the... I want to say it's a it's a Thunderbird, which is the general purpose transport uh, aircraft of the Adeptus Astartes, and this was obviously a, a chaos, chaos Thunderbird crash into the wall of the Citadel. Again, I'm doing comparatives, but I, I still I still love this animation. Crashing into the walls doesn't necessarily make sense. Maybe like puncturing the wall, but throwing the thrusters in reverse and like all that kind of stuff, so you can offload your guys or having it, you know puncture just a little bit that would have made sense but crashing in at full speed is a little crazy but also this is the 40k universe so i'll go ahead and forgive them <laughs> so those uh our, our imperial guardsmen normal humans uh, the, the gentleman who uh, decided to unload a rifle into the stomach of an Astartes and it just bounced off his, uh, you know, ceramide armor. He was probably using a stubber, which is kind of the modern, or it's the 40k equivalent of a modern rifle. Uh, good on him for trying to continue to resist, but obviously it didn't work out. And the Iron Warriors are fully exploiting their, their speed and strength and technology in order to uh, catch the defenders unawares. Beautiful, using cover and movement in order to get past your enemy, to flank him, having moves that take out multiple opponents at once. Uh, th this is why I love Sodas because his um, his his animation skills are actually phenomenal, and I do believe that he could become a a artist on par with Astartes um, once he once he if he gets access to the same technology that uh, Astartes does have for um, animation quality. And, and I, I have no idea how, so just to, just to show my own laymanship, I have no idea the, the amount of effort that goes into an Astartes project for, versus a Sodas project, but I'm still very happy that they exist because Astartes takes like six months to a year to produce. I think Sodas produces uh, something every, every few months and I actually really enjoy his work. It's very good. Um, so 
uh, the the hulking machine that was walking off. Just in case you're not familiar with 40k lore, it was a dreadnought. It's an, an it's a wounded space marine who is on the verge of death, who is interred inside of a sarcophagus, and that becomes his walking tomb. So even in death, he still serves uh, is the motto, and he can use his sarcophagi as a walking war machine to bring hate and death and dis, uh, you know destruction to his enemies. And of course, loyalist and uh, chaos space marines both have access to this technology. And if you want to a more firm introduction check out my space marines lore video check out the my astartes video and uh obviously keep watching this because i'll give you hints and tidbits that you can then use later on in lore videos So I can't help but invite the comparison between Astartes and this project. And one of the great things about it is that, um, you know, you in Astartes you have a whole bunch of like chaos or warp corrupted uh, planetary defense, not planetary defense force, but like militia resisting the Astartes and the, the space marines are just mowing them down and walking through them. You actually have this in the inverse where the chaos space marines, the bad guys in this uh, in, in this particular video, um, you have the opposite where they're just mowing down guardsmen, just taking out all these defenses that were meant to slow them down and that's all they're doing is slowing them down in the most minuscule of ways because the talents that are available to the loyalist space marines are equally as available to the chaos space marines and that's why you see this domination. What I do like is that while some scenes are kind of like mimicked or aesthetically similar with the, the chaos forces kind of bum rushing these uh, these normal humans and completely dominating them, what's unique is the the sense of defense, the sense of urgency, the, the forces rallying into each other that are, are equal or nearly equal. And that's what I love about the, uh, the Praetorians of Terra, the Imperial Fists, gathering their storm shields because they know that the Imperial Guardsmen or the Planetary Defense Force are only buying them a little bit of time before they have to face their former brothers in combat. All right, so the nutsack on those Imperial Guardsmen, right? So <laughs> I think I mentioned in my Astartes video that, like, you know, uh, Space Marines are are meant to take on forces, you know, uh, uh, you know, like a hundred times their size and just completely crush and dominate. And what's cool about that is you you did see something that I mentioned in in the Astartes video kind of come to fruition, where you can fire las guns and stubbers and las cannons and all that kind of stuff, and you might get lucky and kill one Space Marine. And that's exactly what happened: was a guardsman pulled the trigger on a las cannon, which is designed to take out tanks, by the way. And instead of taking out a tank, he takes out one Space Marine before having his arm blown off uh, with a bolter shell, which, in case you're unaware, bolter shells are, uh, they they look like the guns that the, the Astartes use, they look like normal guns, but they actually fire miniature explosive missiles that will blow people apart, which is why you're seeing such devastating effects on the humans involved. So now we have the, the Defenders, the Imperial Fists, versus the the iron warriors who are now here to seize the knowledge that is being taken by the adeptus mechanicus And this is what I love about this. God, it captures, it captures so much. It's so good. 
So you have the, the gentleman with their breacher, uh, gentlemen, you have the Imperial Fist with their storm shields or their breacher shields holding the line. The auto cannon pierces through a couple of them and takes out a few space marines, even blows off the arm of one who, uh, you know, my beautiful face is now blocking, but this, uh, this Imperial Fist is firing a bolter one-handed because he's now missing an arm, but because he's superhuman, he ignores the wound. This uh, captain or sergeant who is wielding a thun thunder hammer who's in charge of the defense, you know, nods at the Adeptus Mechanicus to go ahead Ahead and seize the knowledge and run for it because they're only going to be able to hold on for so long. He uses his thunder hammer, which has an energy field built into it in order to smash a few space marines and then knock over the dreadnought, which has already been wounded by a brave Imperial Guardsman who, despite being uh, probably mortally wounded, decided to get up and fire his last cannon one more time for the Emperor, which is beautiful. Knocking off a few, uh, for a t from a tabletop perspective, knocking a few wounds off of the, dread uh, the dreadnought so the Imperial Fist can close in for the charge and kill the dreadnought which is which is just so good so fucking good so i know some people might be annoyed that i keep comparing this to astartes but like sodas is an artist in his own right and i respect the fuck out of him for putting this much detail and thought into the way the astartes act the way the imperial guardsmen act the way that the chaos uh you know iron warriors act into into so much of this so while i have the most minute of criticisms in comparison to other phenomenal art, this stands on its own. If I was, um, if I had never known of Astartes, I would still find this art compelling, interesting, beautiful, thoughtful, and uh, detailed enough for me to enjoy it, even if the graphics aren't like, uh, you know, next generation or, you know, that that kind of thing. So, th thank you, Sodas. You do phenomenal work. I fucking love it. And what I what I love about that moment, so the the guardsmen have been defeated. The knowledge is on the verge of capture by enemy forces. The, the Mechanicus is escaping with the knowledge, but the Imperial Fists have sold their lives in defense of whatever this uh, powerful knowledge is. The unblinking self sacrifice of both the guardsmen and the and the loyalist Astartes in order to prevent the capture of this information is appealing to the highest emotions and morals and values of men at war and all of the roles are fulfilled both in like tabletop and lore of the the siege attackers the valiant defenders the the intelligent use of defenses the use of uh, you know shields in a defensive role along with uh, the thunder hammer and offensive role the the, uh, the the blasting apart of enemies like where, where this universe just doesn't care about the individual uh, hero or warrior even if you are the coolest eight foot to ten foot tall superhuman like uh, in, gifted gifted with the the best technology and the best genetic enhancement of your age you are still just a, a pawn you are just a, a pawn of thirsting and laughing dark gods and that's god that's why i love the 40k universe so you know we'll, we'll wrap this up but like share subscribe dislike all that youtube nonsense leave me a comment and then also let me know if you would be interested in doing star wars so i find star wars a little bit like cheesier a little bit less interesting but at the same time like you know there, there's only so much 40k video uh video content i i obviously will be doing some more videos as well like my mechanicus video that i, I still owe you guys um, but but also if you wanted to expand it a little bit just to the realm of sci-fi um, I would love to go to uh, over like sci-fi or action scenes so if you'd be interested in that and you made it all the way to the end of the video just leave me a comment so like share dislike subscribe unsubscribe all that YouTube nonsense and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one have a great one bye